Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick demo on how to approach, you know, when we present you with a commented out code like this, where you've got to uh, sort of fix it and it's not quite ready to compile. So um, you've gotten to this point where you've got the non zombie count uh, method in uh, assignment five. And so you're supposed to, you know, sort of uncomment this and it's got a whole bunch of to do's here. We're supposed to replace the return type with what we want the return type to be, you know, sort of string Boolean to double int whatever. And we have this other um, situation where the parameter type needs to be filled in. And by the way, we want to change this parameter name. And then when we're all done with it, uh, we want to actually complete this method. And so, uh, so if we do this and we're not exactly sure what to do, or um, you've gotten to this video, what I'd like you to do is sort of come over here to practice five, open up the circles uh, situation where we have sort of the same thing, but we're going to go through it together today. Um, so first of all, if I, uh, try to run this program, you're going to see it's going to uh, tell me that there are errors exist in this project. Sort of this red X here is screaming to me like there's something wrong. It's not even compiling. We want to proceed. Um, it's it's uh, tempting to just proceed, but I'm going to encourage you not to do that and sort of go back and uh, figure out what's going on. So this problems tab right here uh, is trying to help. It's sort of saying like, oh, by the way, um, this isn't a type. Can you please fix that? I can't find that. I can't find this. Uh, this code does not even what's called compile. Um, what I'm going to suggest we do for right now is to comment that out. Now, you can't always just comment out everything um, to get it going, but work with uh, one of us, uh, me or one of the TAs, uh, uh, to help you get through, like, I can't make this compile. That's a really good thing to uh, show up to help for or ask for help on. And we're happy to help you with that. So uh, let's return this to compile, and we're going to come back over here to circles. If I run it now, you can note that main doesn't do anything. Uh, so it's going to be sort of not the most interesting of all runs. Um, but let's go ahead and fix this. So like in this practice uh, situation, we have a function or a method that we want you to write that is close enough to the unit circle. And um, the idea here is that you imagine there's you know the origin and points around it. Uh, you want to find out if something is close enough to the unit circle. So it's one away from the origin. And it has some parameter types for us to fill in here for x and y and what the return type is. And I'd like everyone to pause the video and think about what types they would put here and what types they would put here. OK, so we're back now. Uh, hopefully, a lot of you uh, chose either int or double. I would say double. A real number is more appropriate here um, uh, because uh, it'd be tough to figure out. Like, there would only be, if you chose int, it would only be 0 and 1 that would work here. Um, so we're sort of looking for real numbers, so the whole, uh, as opposed to whole numbers here for uh, the points x and y. And the return type, in, you know, like sort of this is, is giving it away, um, is close enough to the unit. That's going to be either true or false, and uh, we're going to return a Boolean. And if you just say, uh, implemented this to be return true, right, I could now uh, call this with is close enough to the unit circle with one and zero, right? We'd expect that would return true. So I'm just gonna print out all of these uh, just really quickly. Sys out, and I'm gonna use content assist. Uh, contact us if you wanna learn how to set that up on your machine. So now when I run this, uh, you're gonna see, it's gonna return true, but that's because I did that. If I said uh, 0.5 and 0.5, we would expect that is not close enough to the unit circle. Um, and it's returning true because that's all I chose to implement this method as. So let's go ahead and build this really quick. Um, sometimes uh, when I'm uh, first getting going, I will sort of maybe over local variable, it, just so like things read out a little bit better for me. So I'm going to say x squared equals x times x, and double y squared equals y times y. And if I then want to say like, double um, distance to origin equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I'm getting there, right? This all seems right. I'm going to hit uh, Control Shift F. This is on the PC. It would be Command Shift F on the Mac. So to format everything. And you can see now I have this distance to origin. And what I want to do is check to see if it's close enough to 1, right? Um, 
And so sometimes what I'll do here is I'll create a, a, a variable that will sort of more clearly express what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna make this private static final. That means it's never gonna change uh, double. And that's gonna be sort of the threshold for close enough. And I'm gonna say that say 0.01, right? And that's gonna be my threshold for close enough. Um, and I'm gonna say, well, I gotta figure out now, like, is it close enough to that? So one of the nice things to do here is to say like, all right, so um, if I were to subtract it from one, right? I want both sides of it to work. So um, I'm gonna make another variable, <laughs> right? Um, and it's gonna be um, uh, distance from, a unit circle. And I'm going to say that that is going to be the absolute value. So f dot abs of one minus, uh, or let's say 1.0 just to be explicit, one minus distance to origin. And now my actual answer of whether or not it's close enough is I can say if um, distance from unit circle is less than the threshold for close enough. And now hopefully when I run this, you'll see I get, this is true, right? That makes sense, one squared plus zero squared. Square root of that is one. Um, this one does not hit it. Um, what I could do really quickly is uh, sort of test this on something where I'm like, all right, let's just try uh, something a little bit more interesting than this case. Um, I'm gonna take beta equals math.pi divided by three, let's say a third pi. And then if I call this with, print it out, um, is close enough to unit circle with um, math.cosine of beta and math.sine of, oh, not arcsine, sine of theta. That should also print true. If I were to uh, modify this a little and say like, all right, let's do that with 0 0.5, right? Um, I'd be very surprised if that worked. No, that's not actually on the unit circle. Um, and uh, you could imagine running through this and making a for loop. So maybe I should just do that um, for uh, double theta equals 0 0.0 theta less than two times one zero two. I'm multiplying an int by the double would give you a double, but sometimes I like to be a little explicit about this. Uh, two times math dot pi. So let's try all of these things. Let's um, or a bunch of them. Uh, we'll do theta plus equals um, zero point one. Right. Now perhaps I should have done some relative of pi here. Let's take this out. Uh, I'll just delete it with Control D. I'll do Command D on the Mac. And now let's try it this way. So we'll print out all of these. Um, this out, which we'll just print out what our theta is. Theta. And now you can see it's printing out true for all of these different levels of theta. So we're feeling pretty good about this. Um, so hopefully this will be, uh, this is useful. Uh, and uh, applicable when you come over here to uh, Zombie Simulator, when you're asked to sort of replace these types, give them, give it a good variable name. And then once you're done with that, um, it'll pass some more tests because it'll check out on uh, whether or not you get the method declared correctly, but you can also then uh, proceed to completing this method. So good luck on this assignment and we'll be here to help.